Hello and welcome back. For this video we're going to discuss two-step inequalities. The process for solving two-step inequalities follows the same procedures that you use when solving two-step equations, but it also includes the rule for multiplying or dividing inequalities by negative numbers, and we'll show that here in a moment. So if we're looking at the uh, equation here, 12 is equal to negative 3a plus 15, the first thing we would do is minus 15, minus 15, that would give us negative 3 equals negative 3a, and then we would divide by a negative 3 and a negative 3, and I'd have an a that's equal to positive 1. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to minus 15, minus 15. So I have a negative 3 is less than negative 3a, but this time when I divide by a negative 3, because I'm dividing by a negative on both sides, and this holds true when you multiply by a negative on both sides, I will get a positive 1 on the left, but my inequality sign will change directions, and these will become of 1a and a uh, 1, and 1 is greater than a. Now if we're going to graph that, we're going to use the open circle at 1, and we are looking for a's that are less than 1. We're going to arrow to the left, so all the solutions for a are found on the left-hand side of 1, and 1 is not part of the solution. For this example, we're going to solve and graph. We cannot graph until we first solve, so we're going to get rid of the 6 first. So we're going to add 6 to both sides, and that will give us a 0 here, bring down the 5 in, is greater than 10. Then we're going to divide both sides by 5. So divide by 5, divide by 5. This will become a 1. 1 times n is n, and that's greater than 2. And now we can graph this, and all the solutions that are graphed here will also be the solutions for the original inequality. So we're going to go ahead and find 2, and 2 is here, and it's an open circle because of the inequality being not equal to. And we're looking for n's that are greater than 2, or we can just say that the inequality is opening towards the variable, so all of our solutions will be located to the right of 2. Here's another one that has a fraction. You might want to go ahead and clear the fraction, and the way we're going to do that is to multiply both sides by 3, and that means I'm going to distribute my 3 here, and I'm going to distribute it here. I'm going to start on the left though. 3 times 4 is 12, is less than or equal to. 3 times the 2 is going to give us a 6, and 3 times a 1 third, that's really 3 times the 1 on the top, and then divide that by 3 on the bottom, and that becomes a 1. Don't forget to bring down your subtraction, so that becomes a 1 in. And then I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. That will give me a 6 is less than or equal to negative n. Now you can't leave your answer with negative n, we want positive n. So the way we fix that is we use the multiplication property of negative 1, where we multiply both sides by a negative 1, and all that will do is change the signs. But keep in mind, anytime you multiply by a negative 1 on both sides, even though this becomes a positive n, the inequality will change directions like that, and I'll have a negative 6 on the other side. Now when I go to graph it, I'm going to find negative 6, which is here, and I am going to close my bubble in because I do have an equal to sign attached to my inequality. I'm looking for numbers that are smaller than negative 6, which would be to the left on the number line. Or I can just remember that anytime the inequality opens away from the variable, it's always arrow left. So any number to the left of negative 6, including negative 6, because it is equal to, will make that statement true. Cab driver charges $3 to pick up a passenger. The driver also charges $2 for each mile she drives the passenger. So there's initial fee to pick up, and then there's a fee to drive them a certain distance. The driver wants to make at least, and this is a important word here, at least $25 for each trip. So each time they pick up a passenger, she's looking to make $25 at least. So $25 or more. Write and solve an inequality to determine the minimum number of miles needed for each trip. Now we're looking for the minimum number of miles. We don't know how many miles we need, so we're going to define miles. So we're going to say let m equal minimum number of miles. Now we want to make at least $25, so we're going to start with 25. And at least means $25 or more, so $25 is actually our smaller value. 
So we want to be facing away from 25, but we want to make it at least 25. So I have to have that equal to. So 25 is going to be less than or equal to whatever's on the other side. Now, how do I calculate the $25? Well, I've got a couple ways. I've got the initial fee, got the initial fee, and then I've got the uh, fee for miles driven. And I'm going to add those two together. Well, the initial fee was to get in the cab, $3. So I'll have my $3 plus my fee for driving a certain number of miles. And right here it says the driver charges $2 for each mile. So that's $2 to, and each in this context means multiply the number of miles. Now since we don't know the number of miles, we're using the letter M that we've defined here. So we have $2 times M for the number of miles. So the fee for miles comes from this, and the initial pickup fee is $3. All I gotta do now is solve for M, which is the number of miles, and it will tell me the minimum number of miles a person has to drive to make at least $25. So we're gonna start solving by moving the three over, or subtracting three from both sides, and that will bring this side down to $22. $22 is less than or equal to $2 times the number of miles. And then to get rid of the two, we're going to divide by 2, divide by 2, and that will give us m is going to be greater than or equal to 11. So the minimum number of miles is the amount that's equal to it. So we have to drive a minimum of 11 miles to make $25 per trip.